Welcome to Heaven Awaits. If this is your first time checking this channel out, I'm glad to have you here. My name is Jen, and I will be filling in for Lee until he recovers from his surgery and comes back. As Lee did before me, I too will be narrating the near-death experiences of those who have died and have seen the other side. These videos are meant to bring hope to a sometimes hopeless world and show people that there is life after death. If you enjoy these videos, please consider hitting the thumbs up, subscribe, and bell icons to be notified of new content. Doing so is free, and it does help the channel grow. To the return viewers, welcome back. I'm not going to spoil this one at all. I will say that you are going to want to grab tissues. Don't say that I didn't warn you. This one is a real tearjerker. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and enjoy today's narration. Hi, Lee and Jen. I've been watching your channel for a long time and have finally found the nerve to tell you about my experience. Feel free to use it, or if you decide not to, then I understand as well. I would have recorded this myself, but every time that I try, I make it halfway through the recording. The tears start and, well, I can never finish. Huh. Thirteen years later, the pain has not gotten any better. Today would have been my daughter's 18th birthday. On January 13th, 2010, I was on my way to pick up my little girl from school. I had gotten off of work early that day and decided to surprise her by picking her up early. Due to circumstances and having a family to provide for, I worked 12 to 15 hours a day, seven days a week. So I was gone when she woke up in the morning and didn't get home until she and my son were asleep. This day, I was going to treat her to a movie and spend time with her. I knew that times like this would be few and far between, and I knew the next day I would have to get back at the grind again. I can still see her face light up as she came to the front desk. I can still hear her call out, Yay! My daddy is picking me up! It had always amazed me at how little things like that could get a kid so excited. I asked her if she was ready for our daddy-daughter date. She squealed with joy. One of her favorite things to do was to go to the park down the street in the subdivision that we lived in. So we went there. It's crazy to think that I could work that many hours a day. Yet playing with a five-year-old for 30 minutes wore me out so badly. The joy in her laughter. The smile on her face. She was in a world of her own and just so happy that her daddy was there with her. After the park, I took her to the movies to see one of our favorite movies that we would watch constantly. It was a showing of The Land Before Time. As the movie ended, I began to dread the thought of this day coming to an end. It was now five o'clock in the evening. Walking out of the movie theater, she looked at me and said, Daddy, can we go get ice cream? I remember thinking to myself, we probably shouldn't, but how many days am I going to get like this? Usually, when we would get ice cream, we would get it from McDonald's, but this time she wanted Dairy Queen. Our closest Dairy Queen was a 20-minute drive away. When we got to the intersection near the Dairy Queen, I noticed the light was out. I made sure to stop and waited about 20 seconds to make sure no one was coming. I started to pull out and then everything went black. I remember finding myself in a field of flowers. I remember thinking to myself in this dream or wherever I was that this was weird. It's January, and there should be snow on the ground. Yet here, everything is so vibrant. I looked up after hearing laughter, and my little girl say joyously, Come on, Daddy, let's play before I have to go. She was running around playing in the flowers without a care in the world. She would pick a flower, and ten would grow to replace them instantly. We played for hours together, and never once did my body hurt. The sky never darkened. Everything stayed bright and beautiful. I wish I could say how long we played, but I wouldn't be able to tell you. It could have been months or even years. Finally, my little girl looked up from her flowers and said, Daddy, it's time for me to go. Go? What do you mean, go? I can't stay with you anymore, Daddy. I have to go home. Home? Sweetie, your home is with me and Mommy. What do you mean you have to go home? Daddy, it's time for me to go home and rejoin Jesus. He's waiting for me over there. As she said this, she pointed to a large round door, on the other side a lone cross, and in the distance a man stood looking at us. No, honey, no, you can't go. It's okay, Daddy. It's okay. 
I have to, she said, as she grabbed my hand and we started walking toward the circular opening. Where are we going? I asked. You are taking me home, Daddy. Jesus and Grandma are all waiting for me. I began to cry as I said, Please, Haley, baby, don't go. Don't worry, Daddy, you will see me again. I will always be with you and Mommy and Riley. But Jesus and Grandma are waiting for me, she said as we stopped in front of the circular opening. I'm coming with you. I can't just leave you here. You'll be scared and lonely without Mommy and me. Daddy, you can't come, she said as she dropped my hand. I love you, Daddy, don't forget me. Those were the last words that my daughter said to me. I watched as she walked through the opening into the man who she called Jesus. I watched as the circle began to close and caught my daughter's eyes as she looked back at me and smiled that beautiful smile. I opened my eyes to see my dad and wife standing beside me. I could tell that my wife had been crying and that my dad was there for emotional support. Within minutes of opening my eyes, I was swarmed by doctors. The recovery was a long process. I found out that the little Kia that I had been driving had been T-boned so hard that it split in half. The driver had been doing over 100 miles per hour when he hit me. I was brought in with significant swelling on my brain. The doctors didn't expect me to recover. Haley was also in bad shape. I won't describe the details that I was given regarding her injuries. We were both put on life support. A week went by, no change. Two weeks went by, no change. Finally, the doctors advised my wife that she should take us both off life support. They pulled the plug on Haley first. I believe that this is why she insisted that she had to leave. They pulled my life support 30 minutes after Haley had died. Hearing stuff like this completely changes who you are as a person. I blamed myself for everything. I would find myself screaming, if only I had waited an extra five or ten seconds. I eventually began to drown myself in the drink to help mask the pain of losing my daughter. It was during one of these episodes that I broke down and told my wife that I was to blame for Haley's death. Had I not walked her to the gates of heaven, or had I just held on to her tightly, she too would have woken up after having her life support pulled. She listened as I told her about me playing in the field of flowers with Haley, and she listened as I told her everything that Haley said to me. She listened as I described to her what the gates of heaven looked like, what the field of flowers looked like. She listened to everything. After I had finished, my wife sat there stunned before hugging me and then telling me that after getting home the night they decided to pull the plug on both of us, she had a dream about Haley playing in a field of flowers with her grandma standing by watching her play. My wife helped me get in with a doctor that treats PTSD. She helped me get into a program to stop drinking. Surprisingly, I fully recovered from all of my injuries, though there are times when I still blame myself. I know that grief is something that never truly goes away. Every now and then when I'm asleep, I can smell the faint smell of those flowers, and I can hear my little girl's laughter. I don't know if it was all a dream or if what I experienced was real, but I would like to think that when I died, Jesus allowed me enough time to make up for everything I had missed due to working as much as I did. Haley, I miss you every single day. I know that I will see you again soon enough. Happy 18th birthday, baby. Note from Jen. Ron, thank you for sending this in. I wish that I could hug you right now. I could feel the pain in your words as I read the email forwarded to me by Lee. I cried my eyes out reading this and understand why you struggle to make it through recording it. There were so many times that I had knots in my throat from suppressing the tears that I am sure you will be able to hear it. This was such a beautiful experience. I need to stop talking before I start crying again, so I'll end this with, thank you again so much for sending this in. And yes, happy birthday, Haley. That does it for Ron's experience. Do you all believe Jesus gave him the extra time he needed to play with his daughter? If you're like me, by the time you got to that part, you were probably ugly crying. Don't try to deny it. Anyway, let us know what you thought in the comment section below. Until next time, stay safe and continue to be blessed. Time to thank those who were kind enough to donate to the channel, either via super thanks or by buying Lee a coffee. Let's get to it. 
Dude, Matthew Woodburn, Lynn, and Wolf. Thank you all for your kindness in supporting the channel and thank you all for continuing to watch these videos.